now our next is topic is uh, reinforced and unreinforced masonry reinforced masonry we often they provide in our masonry walls steel reinforcement so how we design and what are the types i will discuss in the reinforced uh, masonry uh, we can also say the name reinforced concrete masonry or uh, reinforced masonry reinforced masonry is a construction system where steel reinforcement in the form of reinforcing bars or mesh is embedded in the mortar or placed in the holes and filled with concrete or grout okay uh, some opening uh, between the walls is present and we embed the concrete uh, and we uh, enter the steel reinforcement in the voids and then fill with concrete reinforcement increases the tensile as well as compressive strength of wall by reinforcing the masonry with steel reinforcement the resistance to seismic loads and the energy dissipation capacity may be improved significantly when we provide the reinforcement in our masonry walls this capacity and again seismic loads will increase to achieve this uh, the reinforcement should be integrated with the masonry so that all materials of reinforced masonry system act monolithically when resisting gravity and seismic loading so here are basically uh, there are various types and these three types are the major types first one reinforced hollow unit masonry reinforced grouted cavity masonry reinforced pocket type walls first of all reinforced hollow unit masonry here you uh, in the previous uh, like uh, in the previous uh, pages of this book you have seen the concrete blocks okay so when the alternate blocks are placed in position the one hole is filled with concrete uh, first of all we place the reinforcement then fill with concrete that is the reinforced hollow unit masonry the second way we pr uh, provide the horizontal reinforcement in the uh, when we place the concrete blocks and then we will uh, place the mortar uh, so that this reinforcement embed between the uh, concrete blocks so now this is all in theory reinforced hollow unit masonry represent the basic form of reinforced masonry construction special uh, shaped units with vertical holes like, just like that the special vertical holes uh, where vertical reinforcement is placed and filled with infill concrete or grout okay means cement sand or with concrete with or without grooves to accommodate horizontal bed uh, joint reinforcement are used for the construction of masonry walls so either we can uh, lift some hole under this uh, masonry units so that we place the reinforcement or just place the reinforcement and place the mortar so both ways are okay so that is discussed in this line before laying the masonry units vertical reinforcement before placing of the masonry unit uh, here uh, other masonry unit other masonry unit vertical reinforcement is placed in position then first course of unit is laid in the mortar and horizontal bars are or bed joint reinforcement are placed in the grooves or in the mortar joints in the holes containing the vertical bars are filled with either concrete or grout and the grooves containing the horizontal steel are filled with either grout or mortar okay so there are basically two types of reinforcement vertical vertical you are filled with concrete or grout and groove mean you uh, develop a hole so that you will place the reinforcement and then place the uh, mortar for the horizontal reinforcement so discussing the both uh, either a grout or mortar as the construction of the wall progresses in order to improve the resistance and depending upon uh, on the shape of units all holes in the hollow blocks are often grouted or filled with concrete infill okay so to improve the resistance we fill the holes with concrete or grouting now the second type is reinforced cavity masonry there is a uh, inner part uh, left uh, with concrete 
and vertical and horizontal reinforcement is placed and on the both sides bricks are placed okay so how here it consists two leaves like left or right of masonry units separately separated by a cavity into which the vertical and horizontal reinforcement are placed and then grouted with concrete infill or grout the two leaves of cavity wall means this wall and outer outside walls are tied together with wall ties or connectors which should be designed to carry lateral uh, loads in, induced by earthquake so here are the wall ties the hole is joined with uh, ties like here okay so when uh, we join another wall we left with connectors so that when we start another wall on this side then the mortar will be placed in this steel stirrups okay steel connectors so that the next wall will be joined smoothly and transfer the forces uh, uh, in a better way the masonry unit should be laid in running or stretcher bond okay here you can see stretcher face stretcher face stretcher face here again okay and on a stretcher face here also vertical stack bond is not allowed means uh, stretcher at same under stretcher same under stretcher that is wrong so alternate stretcher should be provided a vertical stack bond is not allowed in the seismic zones the grout can be poured either as a work progress means as the projects increasing upward you can enter the grout or after construction of uh, outside wall uh, outside wall you place the reinforcement and pour the concrete and then vibrate in the first case vertical reinforcing bars are placed first into position then horizontal bars uh, and wall ties are placed and grouted as laying of courses of masonry progresses as we continue making the wall then uh, we continuously pour the concrete uh, in the uh, mess uh, in this uh, cavity wall in the second case the mesh of vertical and horizontal is placed first in the position then masonry units are laid on each side of the mesh connected together the wall ties the ties should be laid in the bed joints okay here along the same vertical line in order to facilitate the vibration of the crowd pores first of all we will uh, develop the walls up to the height then uh, the ties should be same position like up first course then add some courses down okay then uh, after pouring the concrete when we have to vibrate the concrete inside this uh, cavity then we should uh, vibrate easily not um, after masonry is built to a full story height the cavity is filled with grout before grouting all mortar dropping should be removed from the uh, foundation or other bearing surfaces and reinforcement before uh, placing the concrete or grout inside this cavity wall you should have to remove the the uh, the mortar which is uh, fall down uh, when we are doing the brick mas uh, masonry on the sides so you have to remove uh, first of all that then you have to pour the concrete inside now the uh, clean out openings should be provided if there is a opening in the wall you should adjust the opening with some covering so that uh, our uh, more uh, concrete uh, infill or grout do not flow out now the third type is reinforced pocket type walls here are the pocket type we are constructing the masonry upward and we have uh, placed the steel parts and then the concrete infill okay you mostly have seen in your surrounding areas this type of uh, masonry wall sometimes a vertical reinforcement is placed in the pockets formed in the fall uh, in the wall by special bonding arrangements as in case of reinforced hollow unit masonry uh, units uh, vertical reinforcement bars are placed into position before laying of masonry units uh, in as in case depending upon the units used horizontal bed joint reinforcement is placed in the mortar uh, joints in vertical spacing not exceeding 600 mm the pockets containing the vertical bars are filled with either concrete or grout 
as the construction of the wall progresses okay so we keep uh, filling the concrete now the last one is the unreinforced masonry basically we started the topic reinforced masonry and unreinforced masonry i have discussed, discussed the three types for reinforced mas uh, reinforced uh, masonry now i will discuss the unreinforced masonry that is again most commonly used in our areas uh, an unreinforced masonry is a construction system where lord bearing walls non lord bearing walls or other structures such as dams retaining walls etc are made up of bricks concrete masonry units tiles or other masonry units that is not braced by reinforced bars or beams that is unreinforced masonry okay all wall types without reinforcement is called unreinforced masonry unreinforced masonry are vulnerable to collapse in earthquake one problem is that most mortars used to hold bricks together are not strong enough so that's why the uh, connection between the uh, uh, in the in the walls between the bricks break broke additionally masonry elements may peel from the building and fall on the occupants uh, in the unreinforced masonry uh, that is the very bad advantage if in an earthquake the one part of the building fall then it will deck the fall on the occupants and the occupants may die so that is the ben, uh, drawback of the unreinforced masonry in the earthquake regions where you have seen the intermediate or the high seismic risk area you will not go for unreinforced masonry you will definitely go for reinforced masonry so here is a picture of unreinforced masonry okay here is a stretcher header bond here is another example okay without a reinforcement that is unreinforced masonry so that's all about the masonry structures their properties have a nice tip